Welcome to the online registration tutorial video. First, we'd like you to meet two of the most important people in this process. Hi, I'm Latuan Lynch. I'm the district registrar here at Madison City Schools. My name is Loretta Villianco, and I'm the receptionist here at the central office. I'm the first person you see when you come through the doors, or I am likely the person that'll be answering the phone to answer your questions to get you through registration. Hi everybody. So if you'll notice, I'm actually using Google Chrome, which is the web browser of choice for SchoolMint. We highly recommend downloading that. It's important to note here, guys, that you can also download for free the SchoolMint app for Android or iOS device. This is a very useful app. The app will allow you to take photographs on your smartphone and upload directly to these forms from your smartphone. So the first thing we're going to do is, and we need this later, uh, we're going to go to the Madison City Schools homepage, and then on the left hand pane we're going to click on school zones. So we need to know where you and your family are zoned before we can complete this process. So I'm going to click on school zones on the left, and then I'm going to click on address lookup here. So let's go ahead and look up, in this case Redwood Drive, and I'm going to search 121 Redwood Drive, and here we see elementary is Heritage, middle school student would be Liberty Middle School, and a high school student would be James Clemens. So I'm just going to quickly write down that I have a student who is going to be registered for kindergarten at Heritage. Okay, so now that I know that, I can get out of the address lookup, and you can go to the registration tab and click on the School Mint link to register. So once we've gone to the School Mint link, which is also, I'm going to type it in man manually, it's madisoncity.schoolmint.net. This is where you are going to do your online registration for your child. The first thing I'll have to do is click sign up at the bottom if I don't have an account yet. If I already have an account and I just want to register a second child, then I can use my phone number or email address and password that I had created before. So I'll click sign up. So now here I'm going to type in my cell number. You can use your cell number or you can use your email address. And then I will create a password that I will remember. And you have to type each of those in twice. And we'll click let's do this. So now I have an account created with SchoolMint. It says do you have a student enrolled at a school in Madison City last year? I'm going to say no in this case. I'm a new family that has just moved to Madison. So the first thing we have to do is focus on the parent guardian information. So first I will click relationship to student. I am the student's father. Now my first name and I will complete this. Let me go ahead and go through all of the steps. And this is basic uh, demographic information. Here I can select whether or not I wish to be emailed, text messaged, or both. So in this case I will say I prefer email only and I'm also going to type in my email address. Once I've done that, I can click Next. Now, if I had another guardian, which I do, I would click Add Another Guardian, and I would add my wife on there. I recommend that you do that. I'm going to choose Next. So now I'm at the student information level. I'm going to register my student, my son, for kindergarten. Type in the name. Birth date is May 11th in this case, 2009. And I'm going to say uh, my son is male. And I will make sure that this box stays checked. The student lives with one or both of the account's guardians. I will click Next. If I had another student that I wanted to register at the same time, I could click the plus sign here that says Add Another Student. This will save you time. So I'll click Next here. You can always come back later and register another student. So once my student is in the system, I will work my way through the student information form here. Please select the school year you would like to apply to. That's this upcoming school year, 2016-2017. And I have my student information here. Again, I have another opportunity to add another student. And then it says, is sample student currently enrolled at a school in Madison City Schools? I'm going to say no. Then it is going to ask me which school. Enter other if you don't see your school or not applicable. In this case, I have to enter something in this box. So I'm going to enter not applicable. 
Now I will select the current grade. In this case, it's pre-kindergarten. And the grade applying to is kindergarten. And I'll click Next. Now this is where it's going to give you a Google map view with all of our elementary schools listed, which are appropriate for the age that I have entered for my student. I have already looked up on the previous tab exactly which school my child should be zoned for. So I am going to click Heritage Elementary School. So now I'll click Next. Confirm the details. All you have to do is click the green Confirm Details and Continue. It's very, very important that you check this, the zoning lookup form to make sure that your address is zoned for a particular school. If you register for the wrong school, your application will be rejected. So we'll click Confirm Details and Continue. Now here we have a series of drop-down forms. What we love about SchoolMint here is that instead of having a variety of forms and attachments that you staple together or turn in in a folder, in this case we actually just have a series of drop-downs. So this keeps everything in one place and it's easy to keep up with. The first tab that you'll need to click on is the Registration Overview drop-down. I will click there. So here we have a variety of forms and documents that must be uploaded. We will look here and we'll see Alabama Blue Immunization Form. The original blue card must be dropped off at the school or at the district office before registration will be complete. But for now, I'm going to be able to upload the blue card form. So I have an image of my blue card form. I will upload that. I uh, actually skipped the picture ID. I'm going to click on Upload there and I have a document of my my identification this is just my driver's license so I'll click go next we see the birth certificate I'm going to upload a copy of the birth certificate I've already scanned that in social security card in this case is optional I do have a copy of the social security card needed here I will upload the social security card that I have here next we have last report card in this case, I do have a report card from the pre-K, so I will grab that and upload it. Now we've got proof of residency, and you have three separate situations where you're going to need one of these. If you own your own home, then you are going to upload either a deed or a property tax receipt and the utility bill. Let's go ahead and upload the utility bill here. And all I've done here is I've scanned in a picture of a, of a utility bill. So once I've got that, it also says if you rent, signed lease must be signed by a landlord and tenant. Utility bill must be current. So you're going to need both of those there. And it says contract, those who have a contract or builder's contract uh, with an estimated closing date on a home are required to complete the assignment or transfer request form. Please email registrar at madisoncity.k12.al.us for a copy of that form. Please read the own rent and contract details very carefully and ensure that you have uploaded all of the necessary documents. You can always go back and click the view button beside any of the forms to ensure that you have uploaded the correct image. Next, I'm going to drop down here and it says parent information form. I'm going to click that. Notice that the previous form has now contracted and the parent information form has expanded. So now I will complete this form. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. This form includes name, address, both guardians, etc. And it also includes emergency contact. I'm going to fill all of this form out now. Now I'll choose my emergency contact information. I can also enter a second emergency contact. Now we've gotten to the part of this form where it says, was the student previously enrolled at a Madison City School? I will select no. If not Madison City Schools, was the student ever enrolled in any Alabama public school? In this case, the answer is no. If yes, what school and city? If yes, what years did they attend? If entering grades 10, 11, or 12, what school year did the student enter ninth grade? You will enter that there. Are you or your child an immigrant? In this case, I will say no. Enter what works for you and your family. Are you a member of a recognized Native American Indian tribe? No. If yes, please provide ID number. Has the student ever received special education or 504 services? In this case, no. Does the student have a current IEP? In this case, 
No, your student may be yes. Was the student in a gifted program? In this case, no. Has the student ever been suspended or expelled? Again, in this case, no. And if yes, please explain. Other noted health problems here. Now we're going to focus on transportation. AM, that's morning transportation options. In this case, my child will be riding the bus to school. And in the afternoon, my child will be picked up in car line. You enter what works best for you and your family. Home language survey. What language did your child learn when he or she first began to talk? In this case, I'll choose English. What language does your child use most frequently at home? In this case, I'll choose English. What language do you use most frequently to speak to your child? In this case, English. Name the language spoken most often by the adults at your home. In this case, I shall say English. Now finally, at the bottom of this form, we see an employment survey. Is either parent or guardian located at this physical address employed on federal property? The answer in my case is no. If you... Okay, we are ready to move to the next dropdown, kindergarten and first grade. This is the kindergarten and first grade dropdown. It auto-fills my student's information, birth date, and then I have a series of survey questions. My child was primarily taken care of at home prior to kindergarten or first grade. In this case, the answer is yes. Did my child participate in a Head Start program? No. Did my ch child participate in a home visitation program? No. Home-based child care? No. You answer what works best for you and your family. State-funded preschool? No. Center-based preschool? No. Other preschool? I'm going to say yes, one year. Here I can list other preschool. Okay, we are done with this dropdown. Now we're going to jump to the ethnicity and race dropdown. This is a relatively short portion of the form. It auto-fills the student's last name, first name, and middle name. Is the student Hispanic? In my case, the answer is no. And then here it says, what is the student's race? Please choose what most closely represents the ethnicity of your child. In this case, I'm going to choose white. Then I will mark today's date using a simple drop-down. Now I will use my mouse or trackpad to sign. Now we will click on the employment survey drop-down. This is a relatively short form and some of it is auto-filled for you. I will enter next school year 2016-2017 and the current school name in this case is Heritage Elementary. List your students' names enrolling in Madison City Schools. I will enter my student's name here. Guardian last name and first name have been auto-filled. My address has been auto-filled. Have you moved during the last three years to work or to seek work, even if it was for a short period of time? In this case, I will answer no. Answer what works best for you and your family. I'm going to select none of these options. What city did you come from? My family came from Athens, Alabama. That is in the United States. What type of work did you or your spouse do before coming here? I'm going to say that we were teachers. Okay, finally we'll click the health assessment record, which is the final drop down in this form. It autofills your student's name and birth date and gender. These fields, teacher, homeroom, and transportation, are not applicable to me because my student is new to the district. However, student current school name, here I'm going to type in Heritage Elementary because that is where my student will attend. My address is auto-filled, my name has auto-filled, and uh, my phone numbers have auto-filled. We have the health information and medical history. Place where your child receives health. In this case, I will say private doctor. I will fill out the doctor's name, the doctor's address, and what my preferred hospital is. I'll do that now. I will also fill the insurance information for my child. Now we've reached part two, medical history, medical equ equipment, procedures required at school. Please review the following options and check if any of these pertain to your child. In this case, I will say not applicable. Part three, medical history. Please review very carefully each of the options and check any that apply to your child. In this case, I will say that my child does have some food allergies. Please review them carefully. If needed, use this space to explain medical conditions, list other medical conditions that weren't listed above, and please include any medications taken at home. In this case, I will make a point to say, my child is allergic 
two peanuts, and other tree nuts. Now, at the bottom, I will enter today's date. And if I were not done, I could click save and continue later. Anything you've entered will be saved next time you log in. In this case, I'm ready, so I'm going to click submit forms. Now, once I'm done with forms and file uploads, my status as a parent will be changed to registration completed. This notifies our admin team that it's time for someone to look over this packet and confirm that everything looks good. If you have any technology-based questions, please email support at schoolmint.com or if you have any questions regarding forms or any of the fields that are unclear in this form, please call the Madison City Schools Registrar at 256-464-8370. We hope that this tutorial has helped you in the registration online of your child and we look forward to working with you and your family next year. Thank you.